guys, I am Trent for Trent Sense, and I am wearing my Google t-shirt for this episode. Um, I also have a Google hat, but I decided not to cheese it up too badly for you guys, so um, the shirt's going to be the only thing going for right now. I am going to unbox the Nexus S, manufactured by Samsung. Alright, this is the retail packaging of the Nexus S. The packaging is quite simple and plain, nothing to write home about. You have a picture of the phone itself on the front face, as well as the branding on either side on the box, and then technical information on the bottom as well as the back of the box itself. And of course, the first thing we see is the Nexus S in the flesh. What's very Google-esque is that there is a depiction of the logo coloring on the perimeter of the phone in the box, which is very neat. The front face of the phone is dominated by a 4-inch Super AMOLED capacitive touchscreen. The display is also oleophobic, so you shouldn't have too much of a problem with oily fingerprints and smudges. Another interesting aspect about the Nexus S is that it has a curved glass display. Above the display, you have your ambient and proximity sensors, your earpiece, as well as a front-facing VGA video camera. Below the screen, you have four capacitive touch commands for back, menu, search, and home. On the left, you've got a volume rocker key, which exhibits some good tactile feedback. On the right side, you have one tactile button to control turning the phone on or off, or putting it into standby mode. At the top, you only have a small little notch to be able to pry open the battery door from the back of the phone. And on the bottom, you have your 3.5 millimeter headset jack, the microphone, and the micro USB port. You will notice that the battery door is a glossy plastic which has no trouble in showing fingerprints and smudges, so you may want to be wary of that. Near the top, you've got a 5 megapixel camera lens with an LED flash and a loudspeaker grill. Another unique design cue on the Nexus S is the reverse chin at the bottom of the phone that protrudes slightly from the back. Once you pry open the battery door, you will see that there is a slot for your SIM card as well as a bay for your 15 milliamp hour battery. These two gold connectors that you see here go directly to the NFC chip installed on the battery door of this phone. The Nexus S was uh, unveiled and I read down the hardware specs on the official website. I was not really impressed at all. Initially, there were three things that really turned me off about the Nexus S. The lack of an LED notification light, the lack of a micro SD card slot, as well as a plasticky build quality that Samsung is always known for. Those three pet peeves alone really gave me the impression that the Nexus S was, in so many words, a failure in comparison to the Nexus One. Um, and I really didn't want to give it the time of day, to be quite honest. Now, being able to use Android in such an unfiltered, untainted way, um, which is the best way to use it in my opinion, really was what drew me to the Nexus One. Now, um, in recent times, it naturally drew curiosity in me to also try out the Nexus S. Uh, there was eventually an announcement for a Nexus S version for the AT&T 3G network, and there was a video portrayal of the uh, white version on the Engadget website. So naturally, my curiosity was piqued once again for the Nexus S now that it had AT&T 3G support. And um, I decided to go ahead and buy my own unit from Mobile City Online. Even though this is a plastic phone in comparison to its predecessor, I have to admit that there is a bit of durability in its own right. As I hold it in my hand, there are no signs of creaking or bending, and uh, it feels quite solid in its overall construction, which is great. In addition to the overall durability, I have to say that the plastics also give the phone a nice lightweight feel as I hold it in the palm of my hand. Now, in comparison to the Atrix and the Captivate, the Nexus S is a bit taller. 
but even though it beats out the Atrix in overall thinness, it seems to match the Captivate in that same category. When I first looked at the specs online for this phone, I was intrigued by the curved glass display. But right now as I'm looking at it in person, it's such a slight curvature to the point where it's not that noticeable. Even though the 5 megapixel camera is not capable of shooting HD quality footage at this point, I'm still expecting pretty good quality when it comes to shooting WVGA video in addition to taking still pictures. Now after being with the Captivate without a camera flash for a little bit, it feels quite nice to have this feature built in on the Nexus S. As I see the loudspeaker, I can't help but be concerned about it becoming muffled whenever I put the phone onto a flat surface. Now, one accessory that comes with the Nexus S that I had taken for granted in past phones is the wired headset with the call button and microphone. I know that I whined and cried about the lack of micro SD on this device, but I think that overall I should be fine, especially after reviewing the Nokia E7 um, and being fine with that for two weeks. In my humble opinion, I believe that in comparison to the Nexus One, another huge downgrade is the lack of custom accessories for the Nexus S. Um, with the Nexus One, there was a custom-made desktop dock. There was a custom-made vehicle dock with a built-in Bluetooth speaker that charged the phone. If you're going to have a successor to the Nexus One, you need to be able to offer the same kind of usage experience, and that includes having the custom-made accessories. That's just me. As you all know, my Captivate was a catastrophe when it came to working with GPS. And um, even after AT&T and Samsung got together and released a software update, uh, the GPS on the Captivate was a hot mess and I hated it. And so um, I can only cross my fingers and hope that the GPS on the Nexus S is going to offer me an acceptable experience whenever I happen to use Google Maps, Google Navigation, or RunKeeper. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. As I use this as my main phone over the next week or so, I'm not going to really expect that much of a difference from what I had already experienced on the Samsung Captivate. So um, I'm really going to be able to uh, be eager to have a pretty good multimedia experience, an acceptable camera experience, in addition to having acceptable quality for voice calls and speakerphone calls. All right, as an Android user, I am very excited to finally have the Nexus S in my possession. Um, I'm even wearing my Google t-shirt. Uh, but in addition to having a list of improvements from the Nexus One, I have to be honest and say that there are some things that can be considered downgrades from the predecessor as well. So um, I can only take about a couple weeks or so to use this phone and really get an understanding for myself as to how it can work for me. Um, who knows? I may like it to the point to where I feel the need to leave my Atrix or I may not be satisfied with it at all. I'll just have to give it time and come back and let you guys know what the Nexus S is all about. With all of that being said, I am Trent for Trent Sense, uh, wearing my official Google t-shirt um, in celebration of pure vanilla Android on the Nexus S. And um, I will catch up with you guys on the next video. All of you guys take care and stay safe.